All right, here it is, my first Q&A with a natural health practitioner. So I received two questions from a mom and they're both geared toward essential oils. So the first question was, what essential oils are good for children who have a hard time unwinding and going to sleep? I, can I use fraction coconut oil and use a roller on their body? So recently, there was a randomized control trial published in the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine entitled Comparison for Effectiveness of Aromatherapy and Acupressure on Quality of Life in, in Career Women. So although this was geared to career women, there was some information that came out that could be very relevant to children or anyone who's having a hard time winding down. And that was the fact that a blend of lavender, clary sage, marjoram, diffused, so you're using a nebulizer or some sort of diffuser, increased quality of sleep by 46% in comparison to the placebo group. So with that being said, I don't think it would hurt at all to try making a blend in the fraction coconut oil to try on your child and see if that helps them. And if it doesn't, then maybe go switch to the nebulizer. Um, what I would do is I would put one drop each of the lavender, the marjoram, and the clary sage in one ounce of fraction coconut oil. And yes, you can use one of those roller bottles for sure. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the roller bottles, it's one of these. This is in a one ounce size. Um, so what you can see is I have the fraction coconut oil in there and it has a little roller ball. So as you roll it, it, it applies the, the massage oil without being super messy. Um, with that being said, I think it's really important to address the root cause and make sure there's nothing going on in their lifestyle practices or something that you may not be aware of that may be contributing to restlessness and having a difficulty falling asleep. So we want to make sure we're helping them produce melatonin and have a healthy circadian rhythm. And how do we do that? Well, one, you can avoid bright lights one to two hours before bed and use small warm lights, so orange spectrum lights. So think of those salt lamps. That's a nice color light. It's soothing. It helps. Um, well, it, I shouldn't say it helps. It prevents the circadian rhythm being thrown off by light. So when we use blue spectrum lights, which is like all the other lights out there um, that have more of a blue tinge or a really bright effect, that can actually interfere with our circadian rhythm. So we usually turn everything down an hour or two before bed. Uh, no screens one hour before bed. So screens like tablets, TV, um, computers all stimulate the blue spectrum that's flashing and all that, and that interferes with the circadian rhythm. So making sure that's not going on is really important as well. Um, eating a healthy diet. So if we're eating a whole food, sugar-free diet, um, and I'm not talking about fruits here, I'm talking about refined sugars, um, it's hard to sleep. It's hard for our body to regulate itself properly. So making sure they're eating healthy. And then no food one to two hours before bed. Um, and when you do give them their last meal before bed, make sure it's light and something that's high in magnesium. And one of the go-tos we do is um, banana. We also use avocado, but banana especially, um, because it's also high, it's high in magnesium. It's also high in L-tryptophan, which converts to 5-HTP which, like magnesium, is needed for serotonin and melatonin. So it helps produce and get those hormones and chemicals going in the body to help induce sleep. Soothing activities before bed. So yeah, we're turning off the tablets, we're turning, off, we're turning down the lights, but are our kids running around? We don't want that happening, so no rough housing and things like that. And sometimes we get tempted when we don't know what else to do with our children. So take that time to do something soothing, um, bath, using your little roll-on on them, uh, reading, the, reading to them and things like that. So quiet activity to bring down their energy level. And then make sure they're getting enough sleep because when children are overtired, they have a hard time falling asleep. So for children aged three to five years, they need about 10 to 13 hours of sleep. And children six to 13 need nine to 11 hours of sleep. So make sure they're getting that good chunk of sleep that they need. All right, moving on to the next question. What essential oils work well as a spray for prevention of lice in children? So I don't think I would go with a spray. You can, and I'll, I'll explain how to make the spray in a minute. I would go with the shampoo and adding some essential oils to the shampoo. I would do one drop of lavender and one drop of cedarwood, as well as a drop of tea tree oil, to every ounce of shampoo and I would wash their hair with that 
as a preventative method. If you want to make a spray, you would do the same thing. One drop each of the cedar wood, the lavender, and the tea tree, and I would put it in one ounce of distilled water, but I would also make sure I have glycerin in there. And you have to be really careful with glycerin because it can help your oils diffuse in the water, but you have to use enough of it. So I would say about five milliliters of glycerin to that one ounce, just to make sure they diffuse. If you still see the oil sitting on top of the water, then you need to add more glycerin. So you can use a spray, but from my understanding, although keep in mind my children are homeschooled, most schools are scent free. So sending them to school with something that smells may be an issue for some of the other students in class. They may be sensitive to those things. Um, Lavender is becoming more and more a sensitivity for many people because it's overused in the wrong form in so many products. So maybe just keep it to the shampoo. It's up to you. Um, again, we want to address that root cause. So children will get lice. It has nothing to do with cleanliness or health. However, if they're more prone to it, so we have children who have a really hard time, they have a hard time getting rid of the lice, um, they just keep getting breakouts, things like that, we have to look at the host. An unhealthy host attracts parasites and, make it, and makes it harder to get rid of it. So we want to make sure they're eating healthy. Um, if they're not eating healthy, then they're going to be more vulnerable to things like viruses and parasites. So when you deal with things like that, we always think of what is the condition of the host. So just remember that. It always goes back to practicing a healthy lifestyle for both issues. We don't want to um, use Band-Aid treatments for either. All right, I hope that helps answer your questions.